Sunday tea time, which means it must be time to settle down in front of your screen. The final game of week 10 on the British Basketball League YouTube channel sees the Surrey Scorchers travel to the Cheshire Phoenix. The Scorchers played yesterday, but Cheshire, they've had a week off. The first time they met this season, the Scorchers put on a three-point masterclass at the end of the fourth quarter, but narrowly lost out to the Phoenix 101 to 103. So hoping for another exciting encounter, a Dan Routledge and a Zania Stewart. We certainly are, Jeanette. Yes, Cheshire Phoenix sitting nicely at the top end of the table, but the Scorchers come here on the back of a couple of victories over Bristol, and that will certainly boost their confidence coming into this game, as Amy. Yeah, not only that confidence, but also a bit of revenge and try and get them back, especially like Jeanette said, that two-point game that they lost out. Sorry, they're going to try and get that game back tonight. Let's have a look at the starting fives for tonight's game, starting with the Cheshire Phoenix and Rye back into the starting lineup for the first time since his injury at the beginning of October. Shagwa retains his place in the starter, so it's EJ Stevens who heads to the bench. And at the other end of the floor, well, this lineup has been the starting unit for the Scorchers for the last three games. They've won two of them, could have won all three. So why change a unit that seems to be working? Lloyd Gardner certainly hasn't. One guy you wanted to have a look at before we start the game today, Azania. Ethan Shagwa, who was sensational against Leicester last week. Yeah, he's definitely stepped up, like you said, with Aaron Rye being out. He averages that 12 points, but last game in their win versus the Riders, 23 points, 8 rebounds and 6 huge assists. And uh, at, at the other end of the floor, this guy... Uh, Jordan Hunt was brilliant yesterday in the win against Bristol. Oh, he was incredible, Dan. He had 16 points on his own in the first half over his points per average of 9.4. Incredible. He needs to be good again, but playing back-to-back -back is very difficult. Yeah, particularly coming back off injury that ruled him out early on. Well, Lloyd Gardner's team have won two in a row. Can they make it three straight here in Cheshire? Find out after this break. Welcome back. 
veteran Steve Ellis alongside Josh Brown and Matthew Lloyd as our three officials for today's game. And they're set to get us underway. Cheshire Phoenix flying at the moment, second in the standings, looking to extend their advantage over the rest of the chasing pack. Up against the Surrey Scorchers team who are in the playoff places, which we haven't seen uh, for a few years from them. Can they keep their good form going? Ball is up and we are underway. And it is the home team who will get the first possession of the game. Here's Rye. Jack. Rideau. Trying to find his way through. Kicked out to Maceo Jack. And those are the ones that you expect him to knock down. But they've forced a turnover here and Rye going to the basket no way past Mohammed and Surrey able to run it back Jameson going quickly Skylar White pump fakes the three Chagua in the corner Shot clock getting low as Rideau barrels his way to the basket. I was going to say, somebody needs to shoot it. <laughs> yeah. Somebody needs to get it a little closer as well. We haven't had too, uh, too much there. And there's Rideau doing what he does best. Lead, leading stealer of the ball, doing exactly that. Oh, again, it bobbles down it's nicely. And finally, we've got the first score of the game. Chagua picking up where he left off last week with a layup and one. Yeah, like I said, Chagua had to uh, step up his uh, production, especially with Aaron Rye. He, both of them, actually, a coach of the month and player of the month. Um, last October? September. September, yeah. excuse me, yeah. Um, and I just felt like his role had just come more and more for the Phoenix. I really enjoy watching this Phoenix team. I think they have really great pieces. They've done a really good job in the off-season putting this team together. Maybe one or two people left them under the radar early on, but their start means you can't sleep on them now. They've got so many weapons, as you say. And the interesting thing is they've been able to do that without Rye, who at the beginning looked like their most influential player, if, yeah. if not the best player on the uh, team. But they just seem to be able to uh, mix and match. And yeah. Different players at different times. Maceo Jack also yeah. having a wonderful... Nice pass. Oh, Shogar underneath. There's a late whistle. And he will go to the free throw line. Mohammed can't believe the foul was scored against him. Big hit. But I think this team, you know, they, they have great chemistry. You can always see them high-fiving. They pick Shogar up point in they huddle these are all great signs of a team that you know one like each other but are playing well and uh, want the best and I think sometimes uh, when you're missing that chemistry um, kind of shows but this these guys are, are serious and they're well, at the top of the league for a reason they are indeed an early entrance into the game for Jordan Hunt the New Zealand international of course his national team coach Piro Cameron made his name here playing for what was the Chester Jets at the time the old jet wash team of 20 years ago Piro Cameron was the glue guy in that kill you from three but did a bit of everything a bit like right to yeah. be honest with you that sort of do it all sort of player well, Ethan Chagua with all of Chester's four points so far Little hesitation from Wack has it ripped away. Rye pushing. Rye getting all the way to the basket and finger rolling it in, and the perfect start for the Knicks up six. Lovely move right down the middle. Thought a Euro step was coming from Rye. Here's Hunt just bobbling the ball. So we usually start games well, not so much today. Here's Cooper, and he strings the three. <sighs> Cooper had a wonderful game, didn't he? And the other day when they won, had a, an emotional moment. It did, where yeah. It was just kind of full of tears and it, no doubt when they've been losing so much and finally to get that win versus Bristol. 
pass underneath to Rye, and he lays it in for two. To hunt. Tucked away from it. Cooper again. Great defense. Oh, yeah. Not legal defense in the end. <laughs> Knocked away by Jack, but the foul is called. Well, I'm thinking of starting the Queen Cooper fan club, by the way. I oh. love watching him yeah? play. Yeah? Yeah, absolute okay. utter gunner. Whenever he catches the ball, you think this three point is going up here. So committed, to, rarely shoots a two, by the way. But the three certainly fly. Here's Steele. Nice pass. Well, it didn't quite reach Jameson, who keeps it in play, but only to White. Here's Rideau. Throws it out to Jack. Skyler White for three. Knocks it down, and he stares down the crowd. Enjoyed that. White doing Skyler White things. He loves the three point shot. And there is point from turnover seven so far. Sorry, really struggling. The defense is right up under them. Passing the ball a bit better. Almost a cough up there from Hunt. Shot clock low for Wang. Trying to find room. That's well defended. Oh, I was about to say that was a small play from Hunt just to tip it to the rim. But. Uh, Unfortunately for him, the zeros had hit on the shot clock before it got there. So that is a 24-second violation. Cheshire are Let's looking to mean. add to their eight but, point Yeah, committed on yep. the defensive end. Yeah. Getting a shot clock violation. Here's Jack for three, and what a start to the ball game for the Cheshire Phoenix. They've come out flying four minutes in, and Lloyd Gardner is having to call a timeout. 14 points to three they trail and part of their problem is they've uh, assisted Cheshire in their scoring by turning the ball over. Well they've just come out punching haven't they? They've just absolutely destroyed Surrey in that first four minutes uh, of play. Ooh, more than four minutes, excuse me. Well you can see some of these points in transition because of the turnovers and uh, that has really hurt. Sorry, and we talk about them often coming out to hot starts, yeah. and part of their problem is trying to sustain it for 40 minutes this season. But obviously, on the back of a back-to-back, a, a, a -back, you usually feel like that gives you a bit of wind in the first half, and it's hard to keep the legs for the second. But it hasn't looked like that today. No, I found it quite difficult to get yourself going because obviously you've probably had a late night uh, especially when you have games it takes a while to just decompress relax even when I commentate it takes me a while to <laughs> go to sleep so when you're a player and you know the adrenaline's been going you've won the night before lovely picture of Ben there uh, you go in the night before you're probably going to sleep late and now you're on the road you have to drive um, it's, it's really difficult to, to play back to black Justin Robinson into the game for the first time coming out of that timeout, but they still turn it over through Bailey. Rido again, so many steals. And they're often takeaways rather than ones given to him. He's so strong, isn't he? He Rideau. is. He's looking for his options now with the shot clock winding down. A little step back three, that is off the mark. Robinson comes away with it. Hunt spins one way, then the other. Back out to Justin Robinson. His three is off the mark. It's batted out of bounds. It will stay with the uh, Scorchers. Oh, nice, and easily jammed home by Wang. Well, they needed an easy bucket because they were struggling elsewhere. Right. Oh. 
Chat trying to find room, gets it away before the buzzer and knocks down a tough three. His bench, love it. Really good. They're just playing with such ease, aren't they? Robinson trying to thread the needle. That ball kicked off the foot, so it will stay with the Scorchers, but work to do. They're down 12 timeout call. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Ellesmere Port, where a couple of Maceo Jack threes, including this one, have his team looking pretty good in the early stages of this contest. Yeah. 17 to 5, they lead. Six points for Jack, easy. He's in rhythm, it's two from three from the floor. Here's Wang, head fakes the three, out to Robinson. Has to reset himself, shot clock getting low. Hunt batted away again by Rideau, right diving on the floor. And that's going to be a shot clock violation. Again, the commitment to defense. You've, you've got a guy, a ball hawk like yeah. uh, Rideau, who's always looking at ways and knocking it loose. And then you love to see Rye diving on the floor like that. Yeah, I just think uh, they've got each other's back. There's layers to their defense. Once you get past one guy, there's another guy to help him out. They played by the to the floor. Nice feed. White still had work oh. to do, but he did it really well. Listen, White is such a matchup problem. Well, they should know all about him. He, of course, played originally for Surrey. And uh, Hunt there, uh, getting two points back. White going to fire up that three. Front iron on that right with the offensive rebound. Logan Denby trying to force him out. Goes back to White. Gets to the free throw line this time. Chases his own shot. Tipped off the ring brilliantly by Wang. Great job. He's running the floor. You're a step into the hole, but too strong. Houston with the rebound. He's coming back the other way, and he floats it in for two. Easy. Oh, it's up and down at the minute. Yeah. Sorry, really need to control this. Justin Robertson needs to get a good look. That nice works. pass. Bailey lays it in. Yeah, he just needs to get some shots up. Sorry, yeah. that's half the battle. They, they, they shot half as many shots as Cheshire in this game. So Defense. And all the Defense has been incredible, though. They've had uh, two shot, maybe even three shot clock violations. Shot clock again ticking down. White. That's a tough one. Yeah. Denby rising up for the rebound. going to be a foul. Kicked it out to the corner, so I don't think it'll be shots. Yeah. 
attack in the middle. Inline ball, which Robinson will inbound. Nice pass from Robinson to Hunt, rolling to the basket. Can't finish, though. Ulf doing what he does with the defensive rebound. Transition three is good for Stevens, and Cheshire running riot here in the first quarter. Oh, I love it. I'm not going to lie, Dan. I love it so much is because it's from the defensive end. They're locked in. He's Cooper, and he, I said he's a gunner. If he gets the ball, he's looking for three. And they're telling me, be quiet, Zania. Hey, but no, on the defensive end, other than that, you, you can't let him get an easy look for it, but they're absolutely locked in on the defensive end, and this is why they've broken open this score. Right, driving along the baseline with the two-handed flush. What a move that is. So, so nobody picked him up, and he said, OK, I'm going to go right to the rim and rock it. Teo down on the low block, spinning baseline, taking it at Olf, who challenged him. And that will be two free throws. Well, it was so good. We'll see it twice. Thank you very much. Nobody picks him up. Nobody stops him. Lovely. Well, just a miscommunication defensively. I think Bailey was supposed to step across there, and he went the opposite way. And uh, my suspicion is only enhanced by the fact he's immediately pulled out of the game by the coach, which is usually the response to a defensive mistake. Real quick. Lloyd Gardner talking to his assistant, Mark Dunning, a long-time British basketball coach. He's been a head coach in the league before. Teo many Mix. years ago. His Teo second, makes them yeah. from the line. He's a seasoned vet, isn't he? That's Fine been. wine. At Scorchers for so long. He is their all time leading scorer. Hunt with the steal. Here's Robinson. He's going to pull up for the three, as he know. He turns it down. Parkinson in the corner knocks down the three. Yes, sorry, that's what we needed. Can't get this game. Let this game get too out of hand, especially on the road. Uh, reply three is off the mark. What is going on? Right, right open. The defense not talking. He's, uh, that's a foul, yes, I was about to say. The way he went down, it had to be a foul. It's a bit loud, didn't hear the whistle, but it is going to send Cooper to the line for three free throws. Yeah, and referees are all over this, this season. You've got to let the shooter one land safely and to no contact of any part of their shooting form. Well, they, it's clear they know the scout report on Quinn Cooper. is If he has the ball in his hands, you've got to be right up in him because a three-point shot is going up. He doesn't really shoot from any other distance, to be fair. He's had 13 two-point shots and 10 free throws this season, but he's had 73 three-point wow. attempts coming into this game. He's uh, just a tick under 40% from the three-point line as well, so you've got to be up in his grill. He hasn't missed a free throw yet this season. Oh, why'd you do that? I just like to I like to annoy you because I know you, you believe wait? in it. I don't believe in I it. Believe in I believe I believe he's going to make this free throw. There we go. See? <laughs> don't believe in the jinx. I believe in it. He goes three for three and cuts the gap down to six. A good response from Surrey, having been in a hole early on. Stevens drives, kicks. Hudson in the corner, rattles in the three. All movement. And Phoenix. Robinson looking to run it down to the first quarter buzzer now he drives and he's slapped across the arm and will go to the free throw line you know the other reason as we look back at the foul here the other reason I don't believe in jinx is yeah. because 
I believe, in numbers. And Justin Robinson is going to the free throw line. Justin Robinson is the third best free throw shooter in the history of the British Basketball League, averaging 86% from the foul line. So I believe he's going to make both. Okay, cool. He's one of the great shooters of all time, Justin Robinson. Career 42% three-point shooter. That's top 10 all time in British basketball league history. Third in free throw shooting. Well... Just believe. Well... There we go. My thing is... Foul, he does. Um, is now being a commentator as I've yeah. played for so yeah. many years. And every time I spoke about so, a guy's so, percentage, yeah. or, hey, he never misses, he misses. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're blaming people like me for you missing free throws. Correct. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'll take that. I'll take that. But I've been five for five today. I, I, I baited them into missing, and none of them missed. Right. Here we go. Redan trying to get one off before the buzz. Getting all the way to the rim, everything but the finish, and that will do it. For a first quarter where Cheshire led by as many as 15, but Surrey finding their feet as the quarter went on. We'll be back with the second period after this break. Welcome back to Ellesmere Port, Ben Thomas shaking his head, looking at the stats. He'll know his team were 24-9 uh, up with two and a half minutes to go in that quarter. And their lead is only seven as we get the second quarter underway. Andrew Lawrence who played in the same Olympics as you, Azania, yes, 2012, 2012 in London. Yep. For both for Great Britain, of course. And here is Lawrence firing up a three. And Jameson, that's what he does. We talk about people fulfilling their role. <laughs> Jameson and an offensive rebound go hand in hand. And an extra little elbow to go with it. Here it is. Got two guys all over him, then he just gives them a little Ooh, Yeah, a little yeah. nudge afterwards. Here's Cooper. Fires up the three. Parking some of the offensive rebound. Jameson trying to get one as well, but... Cheshire through Stevens come away with it. Rido rocking and rolling, driving and kicking. Stevens for three. Jameson timed that well, but his pass is a little long. Lawrence still able to chase it down. Driving along the baseline, feeds it in. Blocked from behind by Chagua, ricochets to Ulf. Look at Ulf running the floor and he shovels it forward. 
for Creston to jam it in. Good job by the whole team, really. I don't remember too many times in his British basketball career where David Orff was out leading the charge on the break. It's stolen away again, and Surrey just keep turning the ball over, and Cheshire just keep punishing them. They've rocks the ribbon with that one. They've got to take better care of the ball. They can't be lackadaisical with these passes. Well, the points off turnovers are absolutely killing them. 14 points they've turned the mistakes into and here they are running again in the open court and it's just don't don't lay up at the minute pretty dan this is wonderful basketball sorry sorry scorches that you're on the other end of it but fantastic it's going from the defensive end into lovely offense well the one thing you would say when you're coming up against a team who played the night before is let's run them off the floor let's see how tired their legs are let's try and get out in the open court and Ben Thomas's team have done that sensationally here today. They've yeah. got 17 fast break points as well wow. to and add to that. Um, they didn't play since last week, no. right? Yeah. yeah, so all they've been doing is practicing and waiting for this moment. That was a great plot block that then ignited this transition no look a pass. Bit of no look from David uh, Olf there as well. Showing off. But yeah, you look at this, they've got 14 uh, points off turnovers, 17 fast break points. Yeah. They're just running them off the court at the minute. Yeah, this is pretty, pretty basketball. I'm really, I really like uh, Cheshire. I do think they have wonderful pieces, but what they also do have the depth in their bench. You know, Aaron Rye is still on the bench. Jack is on the bench. Um, a solid team. Then you've also got Skylar White, and they've had to deal with with issues as yeah. well because obviously Rye was out injured and now Cam, Cam Holden is out yeah. injured at the moment. And they, it's almost like you kind of forget that those guys aren't playing. They just keep going. Yeah. And Surrey obviously have a lot of issues. Lloyd Gardner, he's been our guest uh, last week, week before he came in and I kind of spoke to him about, hey, coach, how are you feeling? He said, we're just, we've lost the fun. We need to enjoy start to love basketball again I just think it's such a mental game for them now well they certainly look like they were having fun in the first half yesterday not so much today as Wilkinson fires up a tough three off the iron in the game oh good hands no it's not it's a foul from Jameson from behind Really like if you see Rodeau as soon as he catches the ball down, boom, his eyes are up, he's looking for the best pass, the best guy. Constantly look, look at his eyes. He doesn't you know, yeah. he's focused. Well he hasn't scored a point, but he's got three assists and three steals oh, and already he, in the game. Oh, that's an ambitious pass. Yeah, and he probably doesn't even care, nope. to be honest. Quite a selfless guy. Obviously. For me, I hated. As long as I scored two points, I was fine. I yeah. couldn't go home with a donut. That's yeah. ridiculous for me. But yeah. if I only scored two points, I was happy. Okay. And we got the win, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Well, too many times where you came home with two points. Yeah, yeah. Really? This last season, yeah. It wasn't about me. Jameson underneath. He's to dunk it. Keep going, big fella. Keep going. Oh, he can't finish. Nice pass. Oh, and what a finish from David Ull. Oh, they're chanting his name oh, around here. Yeah, he I is popular. <laughs> thing is, if he's on your team, he works so hard for the team. You can see why fans really appreciate that. Lawrence Needed. knocking down the tree. Needed it. Just showing that you can play in 2012 Olympics and still be out there playing now. <laughs> Listen, I'm not not everybody back. retires early. Oh, there's three points back. Yeah, but I, I think Lawrence has worked so hard. They look so much better when he is on the floor. There's Lawrence under pressure. Nice pass. And this time, Jameson is able to drop it in for two. Looking for options, gets it back. Head fakes the three. 
Oh, that pass just got over Cooper. Out by a three, and Lawrence with the rebound. Lawrence driving in, and that's going to go against Ulf. Just not quite there in time, according to referee Ellis on the baseline. That's the other thing Ulf does. He puts his body on the line. OK, that's gone against him that time, but he was there and ready to try and take the charge. And he will get a good round of applause as the teams head to yeah, the benches. Wonderful minutes by him. Just solid. Also in the building, a former GB Olympian is Dan Clark. Of course, yes. The GM for the Scorchers on yes, the baseline. He's on the baseline. Yeah. He was in the... Uh, he wasn't in the studio, he was a... Uh, he was on Colour. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was on Colour Commentator. Just in the far corner there, looking a bit uh, concerned about life at the moment. He still lives and breathes it all. They yeah. saw him yesterday on the baseline at Surrey, arguing a call that went against <laughs> them. He's probably right about it as well. As Jack goes through, Wang with the rebound. Lawrence to the mid-range, off the glass too strong. There's a little push in the back there from Maceo Jack. There's Dan Clark, general hey. manager at Surrey. And another one who's hung him up of the uh, 2012 Bagre Brigade. Yeah. He's uh, definitely transitioned into life after basketball. He has. I think he was always ready for it as well. I think he's one of those guys who was uh, always preparing for what was coming next. A basketball family, of yep. course. Mark Clark was also my coach. Indeed. And mm -hmm. his sister Ella. Yeah, also one of my teammates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've known that family for a very long time. Wonderful people. Then we might as well give Claire. Well, we ought to, really. Yeah, the mum. Inside to Jameson. Jameson. Missing some chippies underneath, didn't he? Right. And it's right running it back for the jam. Again, fast break points. Absolute killer for Scorchers here. Wang, cross court to Steele. Steele driving hard, gets his own rebound, puts it back in. Good job by Steele. going to be a foul on Lawrence reaching round the back while well, Cheshire still with a double figure margin here midway through the second quarter timeout call we'll be right back Welcome back to Ellesmere Port. Aaron Wright, eight points. Cheshire getting out and running. 21 fast break points. 
They are just having a dunk contest out there, Cheshire, aren't they? Yeah, just having their weight. But it comes, ignites from their defense. Played pretty good so far. And eight turnovers as Robinson fires up the three, but it comes back to steal. Wang penetrates, getting all the way to the basket and laying it in. Oh, I like that from Wang. It's his head down, gets to the rim. Lovely finish. It's kind of slithery, isn't he, the way he gets through the key? Yes. Great word. Chagua trying to back down Bailey. Bailey does enough to prevent it. Try again. With not much time to work with. This time he gets past Bailey, but misses the shot. Ball is loose, and that came off Hunt last. Hunt's not happy with that. Tells the referee he dragged his arm. Well, I think Steve Ellis has been around long enough to have heard all the uh, complaints, and he ignores them all the same. <laughs> Robinson got a little hand on that to knock it loose, and so we get the ball back. Robinson, space for three. Off the mark. There's me talking him up as a all-time great three-point shooter. He's missed a couple there. But all that tells me is he's going to make a couple in a minute. They're also trying to get off that donut. Still on zero. Missed that layup. Still attacking. Hunt. Off the mark for three. Hit a couple of threes in the what appeared to be the decisive run yesterday. That's going to be a blocking foul. Bailey did his best to sell that as an offensive foul, but I don't think he was square on. I think they caught him on the side of the body. He's slightly going laterally as well. Although Chagua looked like a, a man who wasn't convinced the foul was going to be a defensive one, the way he looked at the referee. Yeah, but first seven points, three rebounds. Good start from him. Make it eight points. He re-establishes a double figure lead, much to the Approval of the locals here in Ellesmere Port. Steele trying to find some room out to Robinson. Told you, told you the next one was coming. All right. Hey. Well, it is Justin Robinson we're talking about, yeah. Hun. Well needed bucket, Justin. Well done. Let's see if you can add it with a stop. That's why he's the eighth best three-point shooter in the history of British basketball. And foul called. Well, Robinson is basically again. telling Rideau, you can't start that far off me. I'm Justin Robinson, I shoot 42% from the three-point line. Chagua will sit down. Nine points for him, leads his team in scoring. Yeah, and, uh, it's been, what, just under 13 minutes. Rideau, nice pass, that's a beautiful assist and finished by Jack. Oh, I love that for Jack, just hung in the air and had his eyes on the rim. Easy to. His steal, loves a corner three, that one doesn't go. Cheshire come up with the rebound. Nice pass again, another sensational assist from nice Rideau. Well, Rideau might get a double-double without scoring. He's got seven assists and five rebounds. He hasn't got a point yet. He's we also got three steals. Before. He could get a triple-double without scoring <laughs> at this rate. Nice pass. Robinson underneath off the glass. Point game. Job Robinson finishing. Right. All the way to the basket. Again, another one where the defense seemed to disappear.
Robinson. A little runner, or maybe should have gone off the glass, went off the back of the ring instead. Here's Wang, and that's uh, going to yeah. be a foul against Skylar White. White is saying no way, but yes way. When you slap across the hands or you make a big... Look at those numbers. Five <laughs> rebounds, <laughs> eight assists, no points. He's also got three steals. We couldn't fit it all in on the graphic. And that's a way of contributing without actually putting the ball in the basket. Well, sometimes it's just not your day, and there's so many other ways that you can, you know, help the game if scoring isn't going well. And he's obviously the point guard, the ball's in his hands a lot, and he's finding other ways to get it done. There's a minimum 16, somewhere between 16 and 24 points that have come from his passes. There you go. So that's a pretty good contribution as Skylar White sits down. Sooner or later, though, once that ball goes in the hoop, for yeah, him, yeah. he's just going to go off. Oh, sorry, missing from the free, free throw line for the first time today. Had been nine of nine. Oh, he's gone 0 for 2. That is not what you need. Right, stumbling to the ground and stumbling out of bounds. Great defense, though. Teo might be fine wine, but can still move those feet. Love that. Mm -hmm. Missed uh, a lot of last season with a pectoral injury. Did that in the so gym, didn't he? Look at the, the fast break points, 23 to 5. But yes, my learning from, from Teo's injury is mm. lifting weights is bad for you, so don't do it. <laughs> don't go to the gym. <laughs> don't go to the gym. Well. That's what uh, I took away from that. But, uh, well, ben Thomas will be delighted with how his team have performed in this first half, because offensively, they've looked really rampant. And all those fast break points, all those points off turnovers, really keeps the scoreboard ticking. That's why they've got 50 and we're not yet at halftime. Robinson, oh, it's through the hands. I think Wang was thinking about, shoot. do I shoot this? And forgot to catch it first. Well, timeout is called here with 50 seconds to go in the first half. And Cheshire Phoenix looking to build on this 12-point lead, they will have the ball from the end line when they come out of this timeout. And, uh, our next Sky Sports game is Thursday night. London Lions taking on the Newcastle Eagles. Remember, those two went to overtime when they played at the Copper Box earlier this season. Show starts at 7.30, tip. In the ball game is at 7.45. Make sure you join us for that one. Fancy you're coming up. Make space over here. Even space the wing. Let's go inside to Aaron. Okay? When the ball's inside, even give him a second. Quick up. Guys, please feel lift. Time your space as well. If we haven't got anything, ball's coming back to you, Q. And then Aaron's got a step up screen. It's just the ball went on him. All right? Well, what a detailed timeout if you're not listening or paying attention, you could definitely mess up. He talked about the defense, what he wanted, he wants to switch. Then he draws a, a play with multiple looks and actions in it. Yeah. Wonderful timeout that we got to listen in um, as Gardner. You can choose as a coach if you would like the cameras and the mic in or not. That is at your um, your choice, really, if you would like that. And I love that one timeout. Well, it sounded like it was going to ride was option number one, but we'll see if it plays out that way. Well, it doesn't because Wang steals it away. That'll drive him nuts as Wang runs back a layup. And you can see there's nothing more frustrating for a coach than blowing a play out of a timeout. Spent all that time drawing it up and explaining it. Yeah, it's fuming. Absolutely fuming. But some points off turnovers for the Scorchers. Rideau trying to get off that zero. Can't do it. And they get a stop. They can get it back to single figures here with the final score of the first half. Robinson has the switch, goes past right, extra pass to steal for three, and not sure if he got it off in time, but it didn't go well. 
Ben Thomas. Well, if you told him before the game they'd have a 10-point lead at halftime, I'm sure he'd be happy, but he might feel like they could have had one or two more points out there, Azania. Yeah, I think you're right. They were playing so well, but Surrey, uh, you know, st stuck their nails in and, and played hard and stuck around, and, and that's exactly what you want to be uh, down 10 going into the half. Well, we will break down all of the first half right after this break. Well, welcome back to our coverage of the British Basketball League. Daniel Ratledge and Azania Stewart with you. And Azania, if you didn't have the scoreboard on the screen there, it felt to me like Cheshire dominated that first half. And yet, they're only 10 points up. A couple of scores from Surrey at the start of the second half, and it's right back in the balance. No, I think that's a great point. I felt like the momentum and the energy was with um, the Phoenix. But Surrey, you're right, just kept sticking around. And what I'm worried about is when the last time these two teams played, Surrey stuck around. It was 101 to 103. Cheshire did come out, but they stuck around and had a chance to win. Well, that's the uh, question. They made a lot of threes in that game. Can they do it this time around? They've uh, only made five in the first half, which is low on sorry numbers. And you look at the difference in the shooting percentages, the two-point shooting percentage is the obvious gap there. 58% yeah. against 36, and that's because Cheshire are running out fast breaks and dunking. Yeah, you're right. And then also from the turnovers, nine turnovers from Surrey, and Cheshire's made them pay with 14 points off of those turnovers. Which is really good production. Anytime you get more than a point a turnover, you're doing really well. Story of the half, I think we're going to see a lot of runouts, yeah. a lot of dunks, a lot of fast break points for the Cheshire Phoenix. And uh, also, you talk about it in commentary, mm -hmm. how well they play defense forcing those turnovers. Yep. It wasn't just shot clock violations, it was they were stealing the ball away. Yeah, and I think if, uh, I'm sorry, in halftime here, I want to talk about let's look after the ball, let's make simple, easy passes. They were so lackadaisical and, and Cheshire just ran through the passing lanes and went off to the races. 
but they seemed to get what they wanted when they wanted it, yeah. uh, the Phoenix. And it didn't matter which lineup they had. Everybody came in and contributed in some way. Oh, that's such a great point. But we do have to remember Surrey played yesterday. That's a lot of game minutes and uh, travel in their legs where, you know, Cheshire had been resting for a whole week. Well, and they've certainly looked like a well-rested team the way they got out in the on the break, the way they got out running and dunking just uh, like this. But Surrey still in this one. And with the way they shoot the three ball, if a few of them start dropping in the uh, early stages of the third quarter, this game is right in the balance. Yeah, you're right. Surrey love a three-point shoot uh, shot. Excuse me. They lead the most attempts in the league. Well, as you rightly point out, Azania, this is Surrey's second game of the weekend and they were victorious in their first game against Bristol. We have highlights of that for you in a moment. But first of all, the earlier game, Manchester against London. There's Dante Grantham, you teed him up at the start of the show, sure knocks down a three. Yeah. But Sharma back door, off the alley-oop, jams it home. Here he is with the steal as well, getting out into transition and able to lay it home. Kicked out to Anderson, thought about the three, turned it down, shot clock getting low, so he has to fire that one up. And he strings it to tie the game. Well, another guy who shoots the three well is William Lee, but that one's off the back iron. Morgan pushing it, taking it at the shot blocker and finishing through the contact. Lee. Gets his man in the air. Good He's job. a really good free throw line shooter. Love that, and the crowd love it too, but good poise by Lee. Anderson driving hard to the hole through the contact basket is good. Corner Morgan all day to think about that three, and he got fouled as well. So he'll have a chance at a four point play. Morgan trying to get one back, he's fouled, and that'll be a four-point play opportunity. Holds the pose for the camera. Oh, Anderson, he's blocked by Nelson. He went for the big throwdown, but denied at the rim. Lewis throws it across to Anderson for three. Got it, Jamel Anderson. Anderson. Fouled, count it! Jamel Anderson has his chance at a four-point play. An incredible play. Did you decide between yeah. your Morgans as to which one? I this did, one? I'm going with this one. Yeah, Why there not? we go. Thank you. Right on cue. And that will do it. Well, the London Lions pushed hard, but uh, over the line, they've beaten the Manchester Giants 92 points to 84. Royal Graham Bell, he's going to throw it down, and we're all locked in at six apiece. Well, Thomas Edwards trying to isolate, using that brute strength against Padilla Wang, but look how quickly the transition finds Hunt. Big man running the floor. That's a bit of showtime. Thompson go back to Hunt, but why not? He's left wide open. He's made one three, makes another one. Splits a defense, slicing and dicing. That is beautiful. Right now, dishes off, finds Hunt, Hunt goes up. Big man, he's playing for an MVP tonight. Time slowly winding down for the Scorchers. Backdoor play, finds Hunt, throws it down. Well, he is on fire at the moment. Lawrence coming off one screen, finds still, still puts up the three, it's up. Number seven, it's Raiders three-pointers. There's a steal there, here they go. Got numbers here, Jacob's gonna go up. County gets the out one, and that's one good way to start the second half. Well, there you go. Bristol slowly but surely getting themselves back in this one. Jacob goes all the way, and all of a sudden, now it's a 10-point ball game. Finds Andrew Lawrence. Still in the corner, three is up, and a good response there from Surrey. Thomas Edwards gets caught in a double team, nowhere to go here. Once Leslie Smith throws it down. Are you kidding me? Leslie, that was with a bit of authority. 
Smith made his last one, goes for another one. Big time three-pointer, making it now a seven-point deficit. We've had the scorch as Hunt goes up. He's trying to dunk him, went in with a layup. Lawrence now pulls up. Three is it. Oh, baby! Good night, Surrey. Andrew Lawrence. It's all over here in the Surrey Sports Park. Surrey Scorchers get their second victory in a row against the Bristol Flyers. What a game it was. Welcome back to coverage of the British Basketball League here. Daniel Routledge and Azania Stewart with you. And uh, let's have a look back at the results from this week within the British Basketball League. Sheffield with a good win at home against the Leicester Riders. Manchester, huge second half, particularly in the fourth quarter where they downed the Bristol Flyers. Newcastle ran away from Plymouth late in that one to win by 16. Surrey, an excellent first half, and they hung on to win 82-73 against the Bristol Flyers and Newcastle Eagles down the stretch, got away from Caledonia 82-73 earlier today. Tight game, but the London Lions came out on top, led by Matt Morgan, 92-84, and we have a 10-point game here at halftime in Cheshire. And one of the guys who's always fun to watch when you watch Cheshire, and there are many, Aaron Rye. What an excellent first half from him. Yeah, 10 points from him in that first half. And he was five from seven, but did it all. Got out in transition, finished strong around the basket. Good first half from him. He's kind of a, a matchup nightmare, really, yeah. because they play through him. He plays the four spot. They play through him a lot, so he touches the ball a lot for a guy in his position and he's a little unorthodox i sort of like look back at other players in the british basketball you can't really find a natural comparison to a guy who plays the way that he plays yeah his style is definitely original you know he loves the euro step but what he does is plays so hard he was the september uh, player of the month in the league 
And he's come back from that injury. He went to Dartmouth College, yeah. which is one of the academically uh, stronger universities. You've got to be a bright kid to go there. But he shows his basketball intelligence alongside his uh, natural intelligence. And, well, that's a good start for the Surrey Scorchers. And we said at halftime, a few quick scores for Surrey. It's down to five and six. Yeah. And uh, all that good work for Cheshire, it can be undone. Well, that's the energy I want to see from the Scorchers out of the locker room. Kick to Jack in the corner. Can't lose him. Can't lose him. Especially on the strong side. Wang can't help in. He joined Cheshire last season, had an impact there, but I think his influence on this team has really grown this year. There's another guy you don't want to leave open in the corner, and that is why Justin Robinson for three. I believe when he'd missed his first two, I said he was going to make his next two, and I <laughs> believe he's done that. Just, just, just what do you want, hey? Just on the back? Yeah. I want a prize for having watched Justin Robinson for about 10 years. It's pretty obvious. Skylar White against his old team, knocking down a three and dancing down the court. He's feeling it, and no doubt, why not? Great shot by him. And suddenly, it is a three-point shootout. Both these teams are not shy at putting it up, that's for sure. Here's uh, Wang driving to the hole. White did well to avoid a foul, that's thrown back into court. Rye keeps it alive. Dropped off, Shogwa through the contact. That basket will count, he'll go to the line. Wonderful job. Bye. Cheshire just sticking with it. Playing unselfish basketball here. Nice little off look pass, and the and one. Bordeaux. Still hasn't tried to score yet, no, has he? No, he's, he's almost at the double figures for assists, but uh, he's yet to score a single point. He's 0 for 6 from the floor. Chauvin leaves that one short. There is Rideau, nine assists now. That's a Robinson for three. Fortunately, I didn't say he was going to make his next three. Right. Oh, an offensive Where? foul called off the ball. I assume it's on uh, White. White. Skylar White sort of backing down, but these two teams, Zania. Love a three-point shot. They they're, they're two, the number one and number two in terms of three-point attempts in the game, and we've seen them knock down a few here in the third quarter already. They're definitely not shy. They love the three, especially Skyler White lights it up on the three-point line. Wang getting all the way to the basket and laying it home. Wang can score so quickly, can't he? And this is where Surrey's so dangerous still. They, shoot, they love to shoot the three. And then Wang can be blinking, he's at the rim. Shogwa getting to the basket himself. Well, the thing that Surrey have shown in recent weeks is a bit more stick to itiveness, a bit more late game uh, closure. We've seen Wang being a closer on a couple of occasions, but they need to get themselves in a position to be able to do that. Don't want this one to get away here in the third quarter. Rye with the breakaway, finds a jack in the corner. It's going to be a foul. Shogwa flying through the air, commits it. And you can see Jack feels he should have knocked that one down. Mohammed. And the flat ones come back off the front of the rim. Here's Rideau, step away three. Still can't make a shot. 
It's 0 for 7 now, but they've got the ball back. Benicio Jack off the mark. If you remember the first game of the season, Rideau couldn't buy a bucket, but he did have an impact on that one against and that winner way at Leicester. Uncovered that game as Josh Steele tosses it in off the glass. Like I said, some nights it's just not you. If you can't score, there's so many different things you can help to impact the game. Good screens, good defense, passing the ball. Obviously, he's got all those assists. There's so many things you can do. Five rebounds and three steals to go with go. this 10 assists. He hasn't got the legs on that shot today. Oh, Jack is left wide open. Can Surrey get the ball this time? Well, they had to wrestle Ulf out of the way. That's deflected away. Well, Rideau, no points, five rebounds, three steals, ten assists, 0 for 7 shooting. It's an interesting stat line. Still, a, still smiling. So that's a good picture. Lobbed up to Hunt, who was just fresh into the game and couldn't finish that one. Out to steal. Lawrence. Mid-range jumper hits the bottom of the net. Lovely. Right off the bench and making it happen. Shogwell spinning into trouble. Mohammed pulls it down. Shogwell's going to foul him on the way out the door. And Cheshire's lead is single figures here. 60 points to 51. 4.54 to go. Timeout in the game. We'll take a pause as well. We'll be right back. to Cheshire, Ethan Chagua had a great game last week. He's well on his way to another great game this week, leading his team in scoring, shooting 50% for his 13 points. 13 points off eight shots, you'll take that any day. Lobbed up to Hunt, and he just can't quite spin it in. Christian needed a little help there. Rideau provides it. Ball set in the screen. Rideau into the key, back out again. Jack, too long on that one. Mohammed with the rebound. Lawrence lobbing it back to Hunt, catches it in traffic, tries again, can't force it home. How many? Have they had crowded out at the rim? Lobbed up to Rye, who jams it in. That's how you do it, sorry. Struggling around the rim. 
can't finish easy layups. There we go. That still, thank you. But still does finish for them. So I'll show you, Rosania. I need a bit more if you're going to just keep chipping away at this game. It's possible. Well, they just feel like they've uh, missed a lot in and out, in and around the ring. Nice uh, dish off, and the foul is called. Be interested to see the points in the paint shooting percentages, if we could dig that one out as we have another look at a jam in transition. We've seen so much of that. The bench really enjoying themselves, and you see that a lot from the Cheshire team. Here's the points, points in the paint percentages. What, I mean, you ask for something, it instantly comes on screen, amazing. But six, uh, they're, 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 they've missed 17 in and around the rim. Yeah, uh, that's the game. And right that's there. the game right yep. there. Yeah. We'll shout out our stats girl, Viola. Thank you very much, sweetheart. Should be loving that. I know. Well, we got it. You know, you it's got not it. just we, us. Are, we ask for things and they appear. Well, we're, we're just sat here asking questions. Ulf at the free throw line. Takes a lot to make a great production. It does, yeah. We're just the face, you know? We are. Or the voice, sorry. The voice, that's true, yeah. yes. As Ulf knocks down the second free throw. They love David Ulf around they here. They do. I love it too. Lead back to 10. They just pulled for a second. The scoreboard couldn't tick across. Took a second or two to get that point on. Can't deny David Ulf his free throw when the fans have been chanting his name. Here's Lawrence trying to add some busyness to the team, lobbing it into Hunt again. Pass deflected away. And you wonder whether, you know, the fact he's been crowded out a couple of times put him off going up that time. Here's Jack open for three, and he's missed a couple that you would expect him to knock down. Wang, a little hesitation. What a defensive play that is by Riddle. Oh, he's just... Adding to his stats contribution, that is some points for Rideau, isn't he? Job by Teo on the defense there. And Here's Hunting, close and he's blocked, but the foul is called. Barely. Sorry, he just needs to concentrate. He's not finishing around the rim, Steve, not being solid. Yeah, Steve Ellis, the pantomime villain here for making this call. Let's have a look. Ooh. Be. This is a better. No way. Well, my my first take on that was, could that have been a goal ten? Did he did it hit the backboard before the block? No. A little once or twice around here. I think they'd be saying ball don't lie on that one. But he makes the. Second of two free throws. But he's uh, there's a few of them have had a difficult night shooting. Hunt and Jameson for the Scorchers. Yeah, Their combined seven. shooting percentage is not great. Yeah, one from seven for me isn't gonna cut it. And they're both one for seven. There's uh oh, that one very short from uh, Kristen, and it went straight down. And the problem with the short ones that hit the rim and go straight down is they're much harder to rebound, rebound and that yeah. just sort of ricocheted off Wang out of bounds. Rideau will sit down. Who else isn't having a good shooting night? Rideau, Rideau 0 for 8. 0 for 8. So we, we talked earlier about whether you could be player of the game without winning as Stevens fires up. Can you be player of the game without scoring? scoring. Is that yeah. No. Is that, is that allowed? No, he's got to get a basket for you. Here's Lawrence in the corner. But what if he has a double-double? Double-double, what, rebounds and assists? Assists, yeah. yeah. It's not all about scoring. Jack, hopefully not, because I'll have to try and work out when the last time that happened <laughs> I was. know. 
You're going to lose your mind. Oh, well, yeah. That. Here's Cooper slipping through the key. Stumbling through. Wag, top finish. Great finish. It's only seven points here. I know. It doesn't it feel it like, feels so like so a Cheshire more. on top. But yeah. Surrey just won't go away. Yeah, I love it for Surrey. Just got to keep being solid. Still a lot of basketball to be played. Little zone defense has thrown them off a bit here, Cheshire. They're not quite sure what they're running, and they're running out of time is what they're running. And uh, Lawrence gets called for the foul. Foul on the floor, and that's unfortunate because it was three seconds. But with that foul, the shot clock resets to 14. Well, another one who's a second-generation British basketball player. His dad, Ronaldo, was a heck of a scorer back in the day. Andrew Lawrence. Elbow jumper off the mark, Hunt with the rebound. Ronaldo scored 73 in a game, which is still the highest in a game in this country. 73. Yeah. Oh, he put up a lot of shots. Oh, okay. There's a real battle going on between Teo and Jack Hudson in the key, and the foul's gone against the Cheshire man. Well, plenty of discussion as to the rights and wrongs of that call. I think it's a, a great conversation to be had because why not? It's a dead ball. This is the moment that you can have a little chat with the referee to see his opinion. Well, Jack Hudson uh, is a legal expert, so he knows how to have an argument. I and mean, then we can't convert. The second free throw. Well, I'm not sure he's Dan Clark. He wasn't ready to catch it there. That was Dan's moment. He could have fired up a three there. Just hit him in the face instead. Hudson to Clark for Manchester, perhaps. There he is. He's on the phone. Yeah. Come on, Dan. You've got to be ready to catch and shoot. Yeah. I'll text him and say, have your hands ready, bro. <laughs> Lawrence back out to Hunt, puts it on the floor. Drops it off. Cooper with a rare two-point attempt, although it won't go in the stat sheet because he's fouled. He will go to the line. Well, good offense there by... Well, he's oh, still he on is. the phone. Oh, he's paying the bill. That's what is he's he? doing. Yeah, he's got the Catch card Catch the ball, Dan, Dan, shoot. Oh. <laughs> oh, Quinn Cooper has just missed a free throw. That's his first missed free throw of the season. No, I swear that's his second, because the last time he did that, he missed. He didn't. He he's, did. He's three of three going oh. into that shot. He's now three, four of five. Gosh. And he was on 10, 10 for 14 for 15 for the season. Cheshire are going to run it down to the buzzer here. Hudson drops it off, right. Beats the buzzer, oh, it's thrown back up. There's a foul there. Oh. That will not be the end of the quarter. Hudson will go to the line. They'll put a tick or two back onto the clock and he will shoot some foul shots. And what a great job by Hudson hunting the ball down before the time runs out and gets an extra two shots at the free throw line. Well, Hudson's career free throw shooting Let's hear it. is Go not on. particularly great. Oh dear, so that means he's going to miss it. 56% from the line. Well, we're a wind up, we can't do yeah, this can't. anymore. Well, he's, he's five of eight, well, six of nine now this season from the free throw line. Seven and ten, there you go. Never in doubt. I mean, it looks like a nice shot, to yeah, be honest. Right. That'll do it for the third quarter. Cheshire still lead, but Surrey will not go away. We will have the fourth quarter right after this break.
Well, it's been a few years since Surrey have won three games in a row. Can Lloyd Gardner get them over the line here today? They trail by seven, and Robinson's had to go back to his own basket to get that inbound pass. Is Cooper around the screens? Three doesn't go. Ball is loose. Rise sliding along the ground, able to keep it alive. Grisson's going to take the transition three, and he's going to knock it down. Well done. Straight out of that hustle style with Rai sacrificing his body. Cooper inside to Hunt, spinning round. Misses again, misses two of them. They can't get anything. Hunt and... Uh, Jameson just can't get anything in the key. Oh, here it oh, is. Transition, yeah. pull up. Those are the those are shots that are good shots if they go in, but the coach is not impressed if they don't, because you can't get an offensive rebound out of them. Yeah, you better make you it. You better make that <laughs> shot. Yeah. But he's got the pose ready, so all good. Here's Skylar White, the former Surrey man, breaking Scorchers' hearts with another three. Love it. Such an energy play. They come out in the fourth in this first minute. Oh, they've turned it over. Robinson got bumped by his own man there. Rye running it back, and this is looking like the first quarter all over again. As uh, Cheshire getting out in the open court, that basket will count. He was fouled as well. It'll be a bonus free throw. And whatever Lloyd Gardner said in the quarter break, he's got to rip it up and start again. A minute and six seconds later, his team are down 15, potentially 16, and he's got to call a timeout. Incredible first minute from Cheshire. Come out of the gates in the fourth, playing absolutely no games. Defense, offense, wonderful from Phoenix, wow. Well, it could have been when Cooper's running around the curl if he knocks that three down and then suddenly going the other way. Cheshire running right. Well, apologies for any language you may have heard there, but the uh, message is that they're trying to get the game done now, trying to get it won right now, right here. This is the crucial couple of minutes as far as they're concerned. Yeah, they want to put the foot on the neck of Surrey Scorchers and just absolutely put it to bed, like Coach Ben Thomas said. They came out on fire. Incredible. What was that? Uh, six, seven, eight points really quick? Well, I need the quick maths. Come on, this is where you come in and Ali, you pick to me. It's eight, eight points. Thank eight you. points right. without reply yeah. coming out of uh, the first minute. Yeah, that's quick. And you can see it's a spread of scorers doing the damage for Cheshire. Well, ben Thomas is a happy man, but still, there's still a lot of time to play in this fourth quarter. And as we've seen Surrey come back uh, in this game multiple times, so they've got a lock in right now, or this game will be done, and they're going to have to start up the bus and head home early. Well, Rye trying to make it nine points in a row to stop the fourth quarter and doing exactly that. It's just a prime example of focus, how quick the score can change. Cooper, back iron for three. And this one has escalated out of control as far as Surrey are concerned. Rye forcing his way to the basket, trying to get another and one. This time he'll shoot two. Yeah, like we spoke about this at at halftime, didn't we? Just his style of play he has this kind of skip to him, but also what he does well is protects the ball as he starts his two uh, steps going to the rim. Kind of like cradles it. Tell maybe? you what he does really well. Let me hear slow it. down. Slow down he on the dime. He slows down. Yes. And people go the opposite way past yep. him. Great point. And it's a skill that. I I don't have because I'm never quick enough to be able to slow down. Fair. That's the uh, well, you're just slow. <laughs> just slow in general. <laughs> yeah. But it is cha they, the people change talk about pace, change of yeah. pace and think only about acceleration. But he decelerates uh, really well. Got great body control as well. Ryan kicks it out to Steele. 
Robinson, Cooper fires up for three. And again, I don't know if it's the legs of the second game, fourth quarter. That's Everything's a been a bit short. Great point, Dan. This is when you start to see the back-to-back -back game, heavy legs, shots falling short. Still needs to get it up. Does he get it away in time? No, he doesn't. And that will be a shot clock violation. There's that defense. We've seen Cheshire rely on and really was the start of the game was incredible. They moved so well. They've caused the Scorchers multiple shot clock violations. As Andrew Lawrence comes back in the game. Trying to body him up, and he's going to get called for the foul. And a lot of physicality for a blocking foul. Not feeling that? You'd no. look like you'd like a bit of. No, I'm shaking my head. I don't think that's a foul. Anyway. What do I know? I don't have the burgundy shirt or a whistle. Not yet. Not this yet. time yet. Do you think it's players good. make good referees? There's a few of them in the... Neil McKelvey used to play, John Paul Heron used to play. Oh, Skylar White still playing and loving it against his old team, knocking down another three. Oh, he's absolutely going crazy. Josh Steele trying to get those points back, and he does. Good answer, Josh Steele. Also, one of our co-workers has been in the studio. He has. He had given up the first 14 points of the quarter before that steal three. Just still also has a YouTube channel, it's quite he does. kind of fun and quirky. Quirky is a good word for it. Mohammed, uh, Wang, sorry, with the uh, rebound. Oh, but a casual pass and out of bounds. That's what they can't afford. Yeah. Especially when, you know, Surrey are on this run. Turnovers, 14 turnovers, way too many. And well, it the just, other yeah. problem is that it's turned into 19 points, points the mm. other way, and they're down by 18. It's not a uh, direct line between the two, but it's not too far off it. Here's Rye. This time Wang comes with the help on the double team. They still Joking. turn the ball over. But no, it's a traveling violation called against Rye, first Ooh. of all. You're joking. Oh. Let's have a look. Okay, so what happens? They double him, they get the steal. He sticks with it and still... Oh, no, Wang. I'm not sure what was wrong with that. I'm honestly not sure. That's not a travel. No, I didn't think so either. Lawrence laying it in. What? That was not a travel. I didn't see a travel either. I, I need to speak to somebody. Unless the referee didn't see the little dribble first. It just looked like a hop step to the basket. But, but as you say, neither of us are yet qualified officials. We might have that in our future, at least one of us. His whack! Oh, what a block! Right with the denial, but Wang gets the points in the end. It doesn't matter. Don't get any points for a block. It usually does come straight back to you as the offensive player. So well done, Wang, sticking with that. People get so butt hurt, you know, when they get blocked. <laughs> Stick with the with the play. Here's Rye. That's deflected away, but it's gone off Stevens last. So. Well, they're going to have a chat about it. While they do that, we'll have another look about this. Wang going upstairs for the two for the big one-handed slam, and Rye saying, no, I'm going to uh, deny that, but he kept with the play. And the referees, while we're watching that replay, have had a conversation, and they've decided it is going to be a Phoenix ball from the end, but there's only two seconds on the shot clock. And that's deflected away. So Rideau back in the game then. Do we well, think he can get a, a bucket in five minutes, 
I've got seconds. a stat for you, Azania, really but there's only, there's only two seconds here, so... Oh, he's going to ruin my stat. He scored. I had a player for you. I had a player who had a double-double without <laughs> scoring, but it's too late now as Rideau had scored. His uh, hunt for three, I will give it to you. So you asked me the last time a player had a double-double without scoring. It. Javier Mugatha yeah. scored, uh, had 10 assists, 13 rebounds in September 2015 for Worcester against Bristol. But it all doesn't matter now because Rideau Sorry. has got his two points. Well done, though, for uh, going digging to yeah, find... I had to dig for that one, so to we'll be give fair. You your... That's the only one I could find, going back to 2008. Wow. Only one guy. Well, but it's not going to be Rideau today. He has got 11 assists and five rebounds, but he's now got points as well. His right. Foul. He's fouled, but he goes right through the contact. Just too strong there for Josh Steele. He's incredible. Mm. He's really incredible. You're right. I think pointing out that he can put the burners on or the brakes at a drop of a hat is incredible. Honestly, you know, he's a wonderful player to watch, and he's so unorthodox. He's not the usual fast. Yeah. He doesn't really look like a basketball. What does a basketball player look like? I don't know. You as a. Oh, I mean, thank you. Here's Lawrence driving to the rim for two. Good job, Lawrence. Well, Rideau looking to add now to his contribution to the game. Now he's got two points. You can think about him for player of the game, can't you? Although Rye making a late run for it. Knocks down a three. Cheshire lead by 20. Four and a half minutes to go. Timeout call by Lloyd Gardner. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Ellesmere Port, where it's all going rosy for the home team. Up 20, really pulled away in the fourth quarter here, having led for most of the contest. And this is why they keep forcing turnovers, they keep getting out and running, they keep giving the ball to that man, Rye. And he's been delivering. But to be fair, it's not been a one-man show. He's been dominant, but he's been dominant when it's been his turn right. to be dominant. Yeah, and this is what I was saying about this Cheshire team. Very, very complete. We've seen multiple different players step up. We've seen uh, Skylar White have wonderful nights. Uh, Maceo Jack, incredible, obviously, tonight. 
Uh, I'm going to give my uh, player of the game to this man at the free throw line. You've gone early I there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm still gone to ballsy, go. Yeah, yeah, 24, five points he's got uh, with well, those free throws. Let us know if you agree with the Zania in the comments. That's going to be an offensive foul on the screen, so the three-point shot for Josh Steele will not count. Well, usually I'm on the edge, Dan. Yeah. There's always yeah, two, yeah, three players. True. You wind me up, yeah. start to make me think. You haven't even given me an opportunity to wind and you up yet. And that's why I went straight in with Aaron Rye, so... I'm going to have to change my tactics, clearly. <laughs> yes. Cut it right off. Oh. I just, I'm just disappointed that Rideau has scored now, to, so I could have had that on you. Is to, can you give it to a guy with no points because he's done so many other things? Skylar White trying to make a late bid to change Azania's mind, but it's not working. But Cheshire romping here, second in the table, looking to stretch their lead above everybody else. As Shagwa resets for three on the buzzer, and Rideau, he might get to that double-double. Yeah, that's uh, another rebound for him, he's six. His first offensive, fires up the three. You can see he was trying to draw Josh Steele into a foul, but he's got a steal. He's dancing along the baseline, but he couldn't quite keep his feet in. And that, well, there's a bit of chatter here between Jameson and Chaguar. Wow, Redev, relentless, a pest. Very annoying, but very... Uh, what's the word we're going to use? Effective. Boom, he misses the shot, runs after it, hunts it down, and this steals the ball. Let's see. Trying to use... Those are the other yeah, things that you can yeah. do. You only have two points, but... That's his, that was his fourth steal. He's got six rebounds, 11 assists, so you combine them, that's a double bubble. I'm making up stats now, aren't I? Here's Bailey for three. Wright pulls in a rebound. That's his seven. Here's Rye again, dropping it off. And squeezed home by Chargon. Well, I know index is a stat that not everybody gets, but basically adds everything you do up into one number. Aaron Rye's past 30, which is into an unbelievably good game sort of territory. He's chasing around, they forced another turnover. And they're off and running, and yet again, a fast break jam for the Cheshire Phoenix. They've been doing it from tip to final buzzer, stealing the ball, running it back, and getting the fans on their feet. We love it, and so does the crowd, so does the bench. Look at this, off to the races, rocks the rim. And you can just see the energy his fans, the fans love it, but you see what I mean? The chemistry, the, it's just oozing out of them. They want to uh, celebrate each other. They want to share the ball. They play wonderful team basketball. I can't bang on enough, really. I'll be quiet now. Go well, ahead. What it helps is offensively, yeah. they're so good. They put up big numbers every week. They're, they're the uh, third highest scoring team in the league, averaging up. They're over their average now, 89 points per game. That means everybody's eating, everybody's getting buckets. Yeah. Aaron Rye might have 25 here today, but there's still plenty of points for everybody else to have, and nothing keeps basketball players happy than when they're putting the ball in the hole. Yeah, you're right, and here's Rye, but you're right. Maceo Jack, 11 points. Um, obviously, Rideau only two, but Chagua was 17. Uh, Skylar White, 14 points. There's multiple places for people to eat on this team. They share the ball. They love, uh, you know, you can see the energy, high-fiving, pointing. And listen, they're going to be tough to beat. The other thing they love around here, this song. They love a bit of this. This sweet Caroline gets them up on their feet all the time here. And even when the other team scores, that's not going to put them off. Everyone sings along. Everyone's happy Sunday evening in Ellesmere Port. Well, Jameson, who's had a rough old game shooting, gets two, trying to make it three, and he does convert. That takes him up to five. Well, Newcastle Eagles, the only team to win two British Basketball League games in two days, having 
won in Caledonia yesterday and at home on Friday. Everybody else who's played a back-to-back -back has lost. The one exception, London, did play a back-to-back, -back, although one of those was Euro Cup. Oh, that two-game win streak. It's been a few years since they won two games in a row. And it's another year on from that, back to 2020, since they won three games in a row, but they're not going to do that here today. Good day. Well, he's, not the best, he's not the best free throw shooter, as we discovered last week against Leicester. Although, if you only discovered it last week, you haven't been paying attention to the rest of the season. Nice from Steele, it gets to the basket. Well, they're in no rush now, Cheshire. Just running the clock here. Up 22. Skylar White. Well, he wants to add the pain onto his former <laughs> team, that's for sure. Parkinson driving, throwing it high off the glass. And substitution for. Widow's coming out. The next Greg Wild into the game for the first time. Return to the Northeast this uh, season, having originally grown up in Manchester, of course, played for the Leicester Riders, went through the Charmwood program. Here's Skyler White back to Hudson. Big collision. Is that offensive or defensive? It's defensive. And that will be two free throws for Jack Hudson. Well, this is the point in the game where as a player, down 20 on the road, back end of a doubleheader, you want the clock to keep ticking. But these fans, well, they eyeing up the century point. Can we, can we get to 100? Nothing fans love more than 100 points on the board. Well, when I was playing with the London Lions, whatever teammate um, made the 100th point had to bake something. There we go. Yeah. Well, I think whichever of us commentates on the 100th point has to bake something. get the other one to bake for us. All right. London Lions against the Newcastle Eagles, our Sky Sports game this week. 7.30 on air, 7.45 tip-off as Josh Steele knocks down a three, and there's a foul called on the rebound. Don't forget, you can watch all the highlights. Oh, there's a bit going on here. I'm not sure what this is all about at the end of a 20-point game. It's called ego. That's um, what that is. <laughs> Just let it go, boys. You came here. There's no need to have a chat. And there's still some conversation being had. Three. Oh, we're trying to calm everything down. All sensitive thing. So they're now going to try and work out what to make of that. The original basket was called good, but is there any extra punishment? No. Doesn't look like it. All right, cool. Just boys being boys. Flaring their chest, you know? Or no? It's a sorry ball from the end. So must have been a foul call in there. I didn't see any signals. Sorry, can execute this out of bounds play. No. And it's stolen away. Jack to the rim. And he converts. They got to 98. They'll get the ball back, but they, will they shoot on the final play is the question. To try and get that 100, I know the fans will want it as Steele drives in. Offensive rebound, but pulled away, and Hudson has it. Come well, Edgecott says you dribble it out. Well, it doesn't matter about Edgecott, because Josh Steele has done the 
the thing the fans wanted, he sent them to the free throw line so they can get to the 100. But this is where I'd be quiet so you can come and take yeah. the whole game and you have to yeah. bake for me. I'm going to say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but what are you good at baking? Nothing. I'm really what? not a baker at all, if oh, I'm honest dear. with you. That's not, no skills. It's not my skill set, unfortunately. Oh. I'm, well, I'm, I'm Jack Hudson's got to make two free throws okay, first. Fair. Come on, Jack. We don't need this one to go in. I make a mean banana bread. Do you? Yeah, if he makes it, I'll bake it. Oh, oh yes. Looks Looking like forward a bit of banana bread next time round. Cheshire get the 100 on the board. And they've really put on an excellent display here. From start to finish, he took them to the end to really pull away. But, uh, well, a three on the buzzer narrows the gap to 20. But smiles all round for Ben Thomas and the Cheshire Phoenix and their fans. They're second in the standings and looking great value for it as well. A really excellent performance here tonight. He'll be delighted when he watches the film back of this game. Oh, too much talent. Outwork, sorry started from the beginning they came out hot everybody touched the ball everyone scored everyone played stays in their lane an incredible team i'm really starting to love uh the phoenix the cheshire phoenix they look good they do look good they still have another guy to come back as as well from injury but it doesn't seem to matter if anybody is missing for them at the moment they just seem to keep on winning Every week right now, they're very much rolling the Cheshire Phoenix, and it's going to take some effort to slow them down. That's for certain. And uh, their fans, well, they have been royally treated so far through this campaign, and they'll be hoping and expecting to keep this run going. Yeah, absolutely. But what I like about them is everyone's uh, contributing. There's not one guy going off. Multiple guys uh, are looking for action. For Surrey, I think they have a lot of questions to answer. But do they bring in new pieces? Do they potentially move pieces? It's tough, but, you know, you've just got to get up and try again. And, and just, I, I feel for these guys because it's not like they don't play hard. It's not yep. like, you know, they don't have answers because they've managed to win games. Um, but, yeah, another tough day at the office for Coach Gardner. Well, it certainly is. Skylar White gets one over his former team. Let's take a look at the numbers from today's game. And, uh, well, the 19 turnovers down the bottom really hurt the uh, Surrey Scorchers because it allowed them to get 23 points off turnovers. But ultimately, Azania, it's a simple game. If you put the ball in the basket of a higher percentage yep. than they do, you tend to win. Well, 60% from the two is uh, definitely a good stat, but also 12 steals for Cheshire Phoenix, huge. And then also 19 turnovers for Surrey Scorchers, way too many is not going to get it done. Well, let's remind ourselves of all of the results this week in the British Basketball League. Sheffield winners over Leicester on Friday night. Manchester went down to Bristol and came up with the points. Newcastle, 16-point winners at home to Plymouth. Yesterday, sorry, did get a win on the board, beating Bristol. Tough weekend for the Flyers. Caledonia's unbeaten home record went down to the Newcastle Eagles. And then today, London Lions on the road, maintaining their lead at the top of the standings. And second in the table, chasing them down, is the Cheshire Phoenix after their 20-point win here today. Here is confirmation of that. You can see London in first, Cheshire nine and four, second place. And they played a game less than the uh, team right behind them, two less than the Flyers as well. Surrey still inside the playoff line, but only just with Manchester and Plymouth eyeing them up just behind it's we're getting to the meat of the season right now this is the point where you want to start rolling either uh, in a positive direction in Cheshire or that team right now oh they look incredible 100% I think uh, you know everyone's stepping up every game they're playing well they're being coached well but uh, one thing I want to say to you is I'm bringing you a banana I'm bread I'm looking next forward time. to the banana bread that will be top of my list next time we get here but for Zania I'm Daniel Routledge thank you very much for joining us we'll see you again soon goodbye good night